Hello, and welcome back to Math 301. So today we're talking about the mathematical technique of induction. And the idea behind induction is that the numbers 1, 2, 3, and so on are lined up like dominoes. And so if we want to show something about each one of those numbers, even though there are infinitely many of them, we could do that in two steps. One step would be to show, this is called the inductive step, to show that if you knock over one domino, that the next one is going to fall also. And that has to be true anywhere in your sequence of natural numbers. So if you sort of knock over one domino, it's going to knock over the next. And then we have the base case, which is to knock over the first domino. And then those two things together show that all the dominoes, all infinitely many of them, are going to fall down because we've knocked over the first. And once we've knocked over the first, it knocks over the second. The second then knocks over the third. The third knocks over the fourth, and so on for all infinitely many natural numbers. Now there's some variations about this. You could also, you don't have to start by knocking over the first domino. You could start with one of the later ones and then, and then just knock over all the dominoes from then on. So that's the idea behind the technique of induction. This is not the most creative type of proof in mathematics, but as a result, sometimes they are more straightforward to, to, to do. So let's take let's take a look at some of some of these. So first let's look at 5.2.3. And in this case, our statement is going to be that when you add up the numbers, 1 plus 2 plus 3, all the way up to the number n, that that should equal n times n plus 1 over 2. So for example, when n is 1, 1 is 1 times 2 over 2, n equals 2, then 1 plus 2 is 2 times 3 over 2, and when it, n is 3, then 1 plus 2 plus 3 is 3 times 4 over 2. So these are the binomial coefficients, n plus 1 choose 2, that we've seen before. So I, I surely hope that you believe this statement is true, pn, because we've talked about it in several different ways. First of all, it's the number of handshakes that will happen for a group of n plus one people. The first person has to shake n hands, and then the second person has to shake n minus one hands, and then all the way down to the second to last person shakes one hand. And so we gave a proof of this in chapter one by saying that let's just um, sort of count how many um, total hang shakes there are. So there are n plus one people. Each of them shakes n hands. But then we've counted each hand shake twice, so we need to divide by two. So that was the first proof we gave of this statement pn. We also gave uh, another proof uh, using a, a picture of a, a triangle. But today we're going to prove this with induction. And we've already checked the base case. The base case when n equals one, we just checked. And that, that is true. So uh, now we have now we have the inductive step. So the idea of the inductive step is we're going to suppose that the statement pk is true, and we're going to show pk plus one is true. We can't use any information about wh what number k is because we need this to be true, no matter how big or small or even or odd k is. It has to be, it has to work for every single k. And this is the step where if you knock over one domino, it should knock over the next. So this is what we know. We know that pk is true. So we know that the sum of the first integers up to k is k times k plus 1 over 2. And what we need to show is pk plus 1. So let's think about what pk plus 1 is. It's a statement that if you add up all the integers starting at 1 and ending at k plus 1, 
it should be whatever you get by plugging in k plus 1 in for k. So here when we plug in k plus 1 for k, we get, get a k plus 1. And here when we plug in k plus 1 for k, this turns into k plus 2, and we're still dividing by 2. So be really careful. We'll give another example of this in a minute. But when you substitute k plus 1 for k, be really careful about parentheses because getting everything right can be tricky. The other um, thing I want to say is important is in a proof, always write down the things you don't know yet by writing show in front of them. So if I didn't have this word here, then somebody might get mixed up in grading my proof and think that I was using this fact rather than that I was aiming for it or moving towards it. So you always need to write down which things you don't know yet that you're just trying to show. Okay, so let's um, now do the inductive step. So we're going to start with this mess, which is what I'll call the left-hand side. And notice that the left-hand side is all the numbers up to k, and then one more. And so because pk is true, we already have a formula for the sum of all the numbers up to k, it's k times k plus 1 over 2. And so now we're just adding, adding the number k plus 1 to that. Let's put that over a common denominator of 2. So we have k times k plus 1. And then over the common denominator, we would need to add here uh, 2 k plus 1. And then we can factor out a k plus 1 from both terms. And by the distributive property, we're left with k plus 2 over 2. And that's exactly what we wanted to show. OK, so that's one example of an induction proof. Let's now do another one. Okay, so this is 5.2 number 6. This time we're going to add up not the numbers from 1 to n, but their squares. So 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared all the way up to n squared. And the claim is that this should equal n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 over 6. So let's see if that's plausible when n equals 1. It's saying that 1 squared is 1 times 2 times 3 over 6. Okay, that's true. When n is 2, 1 squared plus 2 squared, it's saying that should be 2 times 3 times 5 over 6. That's true. And when n equals 3, it's also true. And so this is plausible. And so, and we've already done the base case by checking what happens when n equals 1. It's the base case. And so for our inductive step, we're going to suppose pk is true, and we're going to try to show that pk plus 1 is true. So we need to look at all of the squares up to adding k plus 1 squared. And now I'm going to substitute everywhere we see an n. I'm going to plug in k plus 1 for that. So the n turns into k plus 1. The n plus 1 turns into k plus 2. And the 2n plus 1, here's where we have to be very careful about parentheses, because that turns into 2 times parentheses k plus 1 plus 1. And so in other words, what we're doing is we're trying to show that 1 squared plus 2 squared plus k squared plus k plus 1 squared is k plus 1 times k plus 2 times 2k plus 3 all over 6. Okay, and notice how I wrote show by the things that we don't know yet. Okay, so let's look at the left-hand side here. So the left-hand side is basically the formula for um, the sum of all the squares up to k squared 
plus one more, k plus one squared. And so I can use property pk to say that this is going to be uh, this this right hand side here, which was k k plus one times two k plus one over six. And now I have a new term, k plus one squared. All right, and I think we're going to stop here. So the rest of this is just a mess of algebra where you first find a common denominator of six and then you um, expand and then you factor out these terms so then you show show that you get show that you get um, show that you get that okay so that's the setup of an inductive proof there are a couple other examples in the book so one nice one is showing the hockey stick identity using induction. But now I want to show you something really different. And one reason this is different is because it's going to be a statement in graph theory. And what the statement is going to be is it's going to be that if you have any uh, tr so remember a graph is a collection of vertices and edges and when we get to chapter 8 we'll learn about trees a tree is a graph that's connected so it just has one piece and it has no cycles so that means you can't go around in a circle and the claim is that a tree um, a tree with a tree with n vertices so n dots has n minus 1 edges so for example here we have seven dots and six edges and so this is an example of our of our theorem n is 7 and the number of edges is 6. So that's what that's the statement that we're going to try to use using induction. But what's going to be easiest here is to use a variant called strong induction. And the idea with strong induction is that you suppose that your statement in this case, this is our statement PN. We're going to suppose that P1, P2, all the way up to PK are true. And then we're going to show that the next one is true. So we don't have an image of dominoes anymore. In this strong induction setup, we need to use the truth of the statement for one vertex, two vertices, all the way up to k vertices in order to show that the statement might be true for k plus one vertices. So somehow all of the integers from one to k have to be so solid that they can then prove the next, um, that then they can knock over the next domino of, of uh, showing that this one is true. Okay, so this is the inductive step in strong induction. Okay, so let's now um, look at the case n equals 1. And then we have one vertex. It has no edges. So the number of edges is 0. So that's, that's true. So that, that was our base case. All right, and now we're going to try to do this inductive step. Okay, 
And so the way that we're going to do it is we're going to we're going to take our graph. So imagine it it looks something like this picture up here. And what we're going to do is we're going to remove an edge. We're just going to get rid of an edge. Well, when we do that, we're left with two smaller graphs. And one of them in this case has four vertices and the other has three vertices. And we're going to use what we know about the number of edges here, which is three, and the number of edges here, which is two. And then we're going to remember that we removed an edge, so we have to add that one back in. And that's going to give us the total number of edges. So, so here's how we're going to do that. So we're going to let um, G be a, a, a graph, which is a tree with n vertices. And let E be the number of edges. And what we're trying to show is that E equals n minus one. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove an edge. Then we get two smaller graphs, G1 and G2. And let's say that this one has n1 vertices and this one has n2 vertices. Now those smaller graphs are still trees because if you didn't have a cycle before and you take away an edge, then you certainly don't have a cycle left. And they're both still trees because, oh, I just said that. All right, so, so by the inductive hypothesis, um, N1 has to be less than, oh, what we can say is that, in fact, we know what N1 plus N2 equals, it equals the number of vertices. So N1 plus N2 equals N, and in particular, that shows that since each of them is positive, that shows that each of them is smaller than n. So then by the inductive hypothesis, we can say that G1 has n1 minus one edges, and G2 has n2 minus one edges, and so how many edges does G have? Well, it has all the edges that were in G1, and it has all the edges that were in G2, and it has one extra, which was the one we removed. And then simplifying that, the N1 plus N2 is N, and we have minus one, minus one, plus one, so that's minus one. And that's exactly what we wanted to show. So we're gonna return to using induction a lot when we get to the graph theory chapter and there we're gonna need more of this strong induction. All right, great, so uh, next time we'll be talking about bijective proofs.